Hi, this is Roger in Finland and sometimes you want to get a blurry background or maybe get two people in focus and what you're actually trying to do is to control depth of field. Today we're going to take a look at what different factors affect depth of field and how to probably or possibly control them. And for the impatient ones, which are the factors that do affect depth of field, there's four. One is focal length. The longer the focal length, the less depth of field you have. Then there's the lens aperture. The bigger the aperture, or smaller the f number, the less depth of field you have. Then there is the distance between the subject and focal plane to the sensor, and the closer you are to the sensor, the less depth of field there is. And finally is the sensor size or crop factor. And the bigger the sensor, the less depth of field. And manipulating those four parameters is going to help you to control the depth of field. So I've seen in some Facebook groups questions like uh, how do I get a blurry background even if I have a large aperture lens or how do I get two people in focus at the same time. And again, these questions are about depth of field. So first let me explain what is the depth of field, what is the focal length, and I'm going to start actually from what is the field of view. So the field of view is the angle that the lens and camera combination is able to see. And that's a combination of uh, the focal length and then the sensor size. So a zoom lens is going to have different fields of view and that's why when you're zooming in and zooming out things do change. But basically a shorter focal length means a wider field of view. Then the focal plane is the actual place that the lens is focused or trying to focus. So in the old days or in the uh, case of the, for example, Olympus lenses with a clutch, uh, manual focus, you can see a distance scale. So that means that when you have that distance set in a place, that is the distance from the sensor or film in the old days where the focus actually is. So technically no picture is ever out of focus, it's just that the subject is not in the focus plane, if that made sense. But anyway, that's something that basically you can move back and forth by focusing. Autofocus does take care of that, if you do manual focusing that's what you're doing, moving that plane closer or farther from the sensor. Then what happens actually is that even if that focal plane is where things should be in perfect focus, there's an area before and after the focal plane where things are in acceptable focus. And that's what we call the depth of field, that area where things are in acceptable focus. Everything which is outside that is then out of focus or blurry. There are four different parameters that affect the depth of field. Three of them are about the equipment itself and another one is that how you set your scene. So if we check from the equipment, basically if you have a shorter focal length or wider field of view, that's going to give more depth of field. Next is the aperture, and the wider the lens aperture that you have set in your lens, the shallower is the depth of field. And that's why a f1.4 lens, given that everything else is the same, it's going to give a shallower depth of field than an f3.5 lens, given that are set at 3.5 and f1.4, and everything else is the same. The third one, which is kind of mechanical or about the systems, is about the sensor size. The smaller the sensor, the more depth of field there is, and then the opposite is also true. So it's easier to get shallower depth of field given the same framing with full frame that is with Micro Four Thirds, which is what I'm shooting right now. And I'm aware that the other two, we can just claim physics, and it's uh, everybody is quite fine with it if I say it's, it's physics and optics. But when we talk about sensor size, it's some controversy. You don't have to believe me. The easiest way to understand this is actually to test it out. Either you have a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera, try it out. You're going to figure it out yourself. But then the really, really important factor, which is not a mechanical one, but about how do you set your scene, it's about the distance between the subject and the camera. The closer the subject in focus is to the camera or to the sensor, the shallower the depth of field is. And if you think about it, that's why a macro shot at f8 can have a crazy shallow depth of field because the subject is very, very close to the camera. In the same way, it's possible to have a shot which everything is in focus, even if it's shot at f2 or f2.8, given that the subject that is in focus or the focal plane is very far away from the camera. 
Now that we know the four different factors, let's take a look at how we might want to use them in practical cases. And once again, if you don't quite believe me that these are the four factors, please take a look at this depth of field calculator. I am going to post the link down below and you're going to see which things can you change and it's going to calculate for you exactly the depth of field. It's going to tell you that given the focal plane that you chose, how much distance before and after, it's still an acceptable focus. And it's going to talk also about the circle of confusion. And if you really, really want to get into this and learn about the physics behind it, then go and study a little bit about the circle of confusion. The important thing here is that we have those four factors. Most likely, the camera sensor is not something we can affect too much because we have a camera and then we might be able to change the lenses or play with the aperture and change the distance so that's what we're going to try to do so one situation where we might want less depth of field and that's something i have read the comment almost verbatim like this i just bought an f1.8 lens and my background is still not blurry how come i thought that that was the thing that i needed it might be true but it's also true that if your background is very very close to you it might be within the depth of field and that means that it's going to be in focus. So if you really want your background blurry, the best thing you can do is put it far away. Now that we have so much of people working remotely, we have also newscasters and sports analysts working from home. You can see that many of them, they just go and sit just in front of a wall and it's right behind them. And there's no separation at all. Compared to those of them that do it the opposite, they probably have a camera on a wall and behind them they have this space. That's why things can look usually more blurry. And whether you like it or not, that's maybe a personal choice, but it does give separation between the subject and the background. And that's usually desirable. And just to, and just to show it to you, I'm going to now grab this camera. All right, now quite close. And you can see that now that I'm closer to it, there's less depth of field and the stuff which is behind me. And that stuff is pretty much at the same distance than before, now it's blurrier. If I do get whoops, closer to the background, that starts to be more in focus. I'll try to keep my distance to the camera and I apologize for being so close, but now you'll see how much more out of focus that goes when I increase the distance from the background to the camera and my distance has been the same all the time. So that's the easiest way to get the blurry background is get it far away from you. Is everything back to normal? Then a situation where you might actually want more depth of field, but many people don't think about depth of field as the concept that is going to help them achieve the result is when, to want, it's when you want to have two people in focus at the same time. And I've seen the question of, I have this camera and it has this fantastic uh, face detection. It's detecting two faces, but only one of them is in focus. How come? And the reason is that a lens can focus only to one focal plane at a time. So if you have two people who are in different focal planes, there's no way that the camera can do that. It will focus to one of them only. And if the other one happens to be outside of the depth of field or the acceptable focus, then it is out of focus. So what can be done? One thing is that you can close down the aperture because then the depth of field does increase. You could try to focus somewhere between them on the hope that then both faces will get into the depth of field zone. And another thing that can be done is to basically get them farther away from the camera. So the relative distance between the two of them and the camera becomes more similar. Both of them are within the depth of field because they are farther away from the sensor, as we said before. And the practical use case, by the way, for this situation would be a couple where somebody is hiding somebody from behind or two siblings, the older one being behind and the smaller one being in front. And basically there's a head separation on difference of focal plane. But if you think that your camera should be able to focus on the two faces because it's detecting them, it can't because it physically cannot happen. A lens cannot focus in more than one focal plane at once. One thing is that it's able to detect the face, that's great. But then you still need to tell the camera to decide which of the two will you actually focus in which of the two you put the focal plane. Then if you have control of the depth of field, you might be able to get them both in focus. So in summary, and what I would like that you guys take as takeaway from this video is that the depth of field is not only governed by the like physical or the gear that you're using, meaning the lens, that would be the aperture and the focal length. 
and the sensor size, but also how you set up your scene. It has a huge impact on depth of field and which things are in focus and out of focus. Many people might uh, be buying um, wide angle lenses with a large aperture and then being surprised that it's difficult to get a really shallow depth of field with that. And that's because it's a really wide angle. In the same way, it's possible to get shallow depth of field with a really long lens, even if it's an f5.6. Then the next one is that even if you have an f1.4 lens mounted on a full frame sensor, if your background is just next behind your ears, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to get it out of focus. You might be able to do it, but then I don't think that even your face will be fully in focus. You might get your eyelashes in focus and everything else would be blurred out. Might be an artistic choice, but that's something to think about. Is it possible to get shallow depth of field with micro four thirds? Yes, it is, given that you know how to play with it, given that you push your background far away enough and that your lens has big enough aperture. So the combination of all of these things is what allows you to control it. I hope you learned something new today and you might try some things and especially experiment if you have some doubts or you don't believe some of the things I said. Experimenting is the best way to set all these kind of things. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. And we're going to see you soon for some more questions.